26 after 1, after 12 in Queensland. Well, it's been pouring across most of the eastern states, certainly along the coast, uh, but now we're hearing the central west and the southwest of New South Wales are receiving rain as well, which is wonderful to hear. Coona Barabran, which had ran out of water about two weeks ago, um, it's receiving rain as well. But unfortunately, that doesn't mean the drought has broken. Now, I'm a patron of Beef It Up Australia, which is a group supporting our hardworking farmers. They've been running a campaign which is terrific. They've launched their 1,000 Paddocks campaign, which is a fundraiser aiming to help continue their good work in small towns. Anita Donlan is the manager of the campaign, and she's on the line right now. G'day there, Anita. How are you, Chris? And welcome back to 2GB. It's an absolute pleasure to hear you on air again. You are a champion. You are a champion. Thank you. Tell us more about how the 1,000 Paddocks campaign works. Well, the 1000 Paddocks campaign was, um, it came about because as all of our volunteers and supporters, we sit around and we have our communication via social media. We all talk about, you know, when we go to a small town for whatever reason, because most of us are all out bush and, and out in rural, that we go past, you know, hundreds and thousands of paddocks to get to where we have to go. And a thousand paddocks was was born. Um, we came up with the idea that, you know, everyone can afford $5. So for us to actually do something and connect with the small community, we, we, need, we need around about $5,000 to do something really, really cool for them to bring everyone together on a couple of occasions or yep. split it up across different places. Yeah, boat lift boats. the spirits. That's one of yeah. the main things we need to do, lift the spirits of yeah. those in the bush. That's right. So we thought, well, you know, so everyone knows where their money is going, that they're going to donate, which, by the way, is a 100% tax deductible because the Australian Horizons Foundation does have the um, DGR status and is classed as a humanitarian society, just like Red Cross and so forth. Um, we thought, well, $5, when we get a 1000 that's a 1000 paddocks, we'll hit a postcode up. And just like what we're doing on the 22nd and 23rd of this month, we're going out to a little tiny town, to our first town, called Walkall. Walkall is, has been hit by not only drought, but also the uh, water debacle. And, of course, that's in the electorate of the wonderful Helen Dalton from the Shooters and Fishers, who has been a huge, huge push and supporter of the uh, Can the Plan, of course, that big rally in Canberra uh, a few months ago. Good on. And it, it's the, the momentum just of us coming to this town, as we've seen in over the years, and this isn't new for what we're doing, it's just been incredible. So I'm actually taking a few volunteers up to Walkall on Tuesday just to uh, meet everybody and, and uh, plan everything out with, with the whole community. And we just need people's support. We need people to go, yeah, I've got to spare five bucks in my, in my bank. Mm. And uh, encourage them to go to beefitupaustralia.org, click on the first donate button. Straight away, it's going to go into the trust at the Australian Horizons Foundation. The donor is going to get a tax deductible receipt. And from there, they're actually encouraged to come out on the road with us if they can't, because we understand not everybody can. Um, we'll be taking them on the journey on social media with us. So. It's it's very exciting. Our other two towns that we've also announced, uh, which are, is Corinda near Walgett mm -hmm. in uh, in New South Wales, yep. and uh, also a little town called Hopeton. Um, Hopeton is uh, in the Mallee and has been badly hit by drought. They've had an okay uh, season this year. But it's all cereal growing country, um, but you know their their hotel is is community owned. You know, and where we're going to Walkall, we're going to the Services Club, which is also community owned. So Great stuff. We, what, what we do, people can see, but more importantly, people are getting excited because these people in the small towns, and it's not just the farmers, it's the small businesses as well, um, they're getting excited with the fact that people do care and they're actually going to have a night out. And in Walkall's case and Hopeton, we're actually going to be doing a, a, a couple of, of, of two days um, where we've got uh, Mick and Jodie Ann from My Kitchen Rules. They'll be coming up and cooking and and uh, cooking up a bit of a lunch for everybody, and then, right. of course, telling their story as well. Yeah, good stuff. All right, so we go to beefitupaustralia.org, and this is how you can donate, just $5, and then you can do all of this great stuff in various little places, as you've described. It, it does go effectively straight to working for the people, right? It does, it does. We're all volunteers, and one of the things I looked into when I joined, when I was asked to join the board, 
was I looked into um, you know how the operations of it. I didn't want to walk into a bun fight, and uh, I was pleasantly surprised to even see that the CEO is, is is a volunteer. The board members are volunteers. I'm a volunteer. We've got sixty odd volunteers um, that. Are, from all walks of life, and any of your listeners, if they want to volunteer in any way, um, whether it be on social media or coming out or connecting with networks or whatever, we are all volunteers, and right. we are so proud of what we do. Yeah, you should uh, be. At the same time, we are. We do sometimes get uh, a little bit sad when we get phone calls from communities all the time and individuals all the time of people saying, you know. Why? Where, where's all the money going? And we can only tell them where our money goes, well, we, where your money goes to help us. Um, the other thing, Chris, I just wanted to mention is um, we're getting a lot of phone calls. And I say we, myself and, and, and the core group of our, of our supporters that support what we do, we're getting a lot of phone calls from, from our, our farmers and our families out in drought with the bushfires and they're saying, you know, we're going to be forgotten. I just want to let any listener that is listening that is out in the drought affected community, we haven't forgotten you. We we will never forget you and we are here about making sure that people, your listeners, are aware of the communities that they can actually go and become a local for the day or the night and actually travel. And as you know, Chris, I've been talking to you on air now for over 10 years. We, we have been preaching this for a long, long time mm-hmm. without our small communities and without putting the pride. You were just talking about the pride um, of being an Australian, you know, without without celebrating and paying homage to our our Australians, our rural communities that are the backbone of our country, um, it's a very sad day when when we forget where our forefathers came from. So, you know, it's that that's our message to people. Let's let's celebrate. It is a very negative thing that's happening right now out there, but we're about seeing the glass half full and saying, you know what, guys, we're on our way. Yeah. And we can only go as far as as our donations go. Great. Good stuff. You enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll send people to beefitupaustralia.org and uh, we'll keep the good work going. Good on you, Anita. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. All right. Thank Anita you. Donlan, manager of the campaign for Beef It Up Australia. Uh, and I'm a patron of Beef It Up Australia, which is why I love supporting Anita and the rest of the volunteer gang.